Kia ora. And there's another greeting. I seem to be going through quite a few at the minute. Welcome to another biology podcast, the third part of our protein synthesis podcasts. So let's get straight into things. If you look at your screen right now, you'll see an image which is basically taken from the end of the last podcast. So, so far we've talked about transcription in the first podcast, which was creating that mRNA transcript from a piece of DNA. And then in the last podcast, we started talking about translation, which was using that transcript to actually create a protein. And all that was happening at the part of the cell called the ribosome. So in the image on the screen, you can see the ribosome. You can see the RNA or the mRNA transcript that's actually sticking through there. And you can also see the tRNA, which is a transfer RNA that's actually sort of binding onto the mRNA and also delivering the amino acid so that it can begin making this polypeptide. And you see the image changing now, and we can see those two um, structures there, the um, cube and the triangle, which were the amino acids that we were talking about. And they've obviously been joined together by the ribosome, so those two amino acids are joined together. So let's just remind ourselves of what the polypeptide looks like. So looking at the screen now, you'll see the image that we used in the last podcast, which is lots of those little pink circles, each of the pink circles representing an amino acid, and they've all been joined together by peptide bonds. And what you've got is a molecule we call a polypeptide, which basically is a protein. So that's what the ribosome is actually making there while it's using the mRNA transcript and the tRNA, the transfer RNA, to deliver those amino acids, and then the ribosome is joining those amino acids together. So you can see there the tRNA moving away, away from the ribosome. And you're seeing now the ribosome actually moving forward three bases, so into the next code of mRNA, and then the next tRNA molecule carrying amino acid binding onto the next codon. So you got the so there we can see the codon of the mRNA joining on with the anticodon of the tRNA. And obviously at the bottom of that tRNA molecule is also another amino acid that's going to become part of this polypeptide, this chain of amino acids, and this protein that's going to be made. And then once again, the ribosome gives it some energy to join those amino acids together to form this polypeptide chain. So now we're going to see things speeded up a little bit. And you can see the tRNA moving in one side there and just coming out the other. And as they actually go through the ribosome, they're dropping off their amino acid. That ribosome's giving it the energy to actually join those all together. And at the bottom there, you can actually see the polypeptide chain being formed. That's those um, green shapes that are all being joined together, sticking at the bottom left-hand corner of the ribosome. So in they come again. There's the tRNA is just going through, dropping off their amino acids. That polypeptide chain, that amino acid chain, at the bottom left-hand corner there, just moving away from the ribosome and continually being formed. And if we watch it now, we'll notice that that amino acid chain is actually just being released from the ribosome, and that's basically the protein that's actually been created as a as part of this whole process. So we've actually reached the end of the process there. So the polypeptide chain has now been formed, and it, off it goes to either join on with another polypeptide to form a big protein, or to go on and do the job that it's meant to do. So that protein could be any one of those things we've already talked about. It could be an enzyme, it could be hemoglobin that's in the blood, it could be the protein in our bones, or thousands and thousands of other different proteins that all have their own specific jobs. Uh, and with those specific jobs in mind, they are made of a particular um, sequence of amino acids that's been determined by the order of the bases in the DNA. So we've pretty much got to the point now where the protein has actually been synthesized. But let's just quickly go through one or two sort of important details that we've sort of missed out on the way. And we just need to go back and make sure we cover. So let's go right back to the image where we've got on the screen now, which is the ribosome starting to synthesize the protein from that mRNA transcript. Now, the point of going back here was I just actually want you to actually learn a little bit about, okay, well, where does it... How does it know where to start actually translating this mRNA transcript? Because it doesn't necessarily translate the whole thing. It actually has a particular point of the transcript where it actually starts. So it finds the five end of the transcript, moves along it in threes, and then actually starts translating that uh, piece of mRNA at a particular point. So just coming onto your screens now, you will notice we've got the big chart of mRNA codons again. And I want you to look for a particular codon. 
So I want you to find out what amino acid is coded for by the codon AUG. Just pause me for a second while you go and find that. Okay, so you should have found that the amino acid is MET or MET. Okay, let's not worry about what it, its long name is for the time being. But AUG basically is, is one particular code that's really, really important. And be, the reason for its importance is AUG is known as what we call a start codon. So basically what is happening is the ribosome moves along that transcript in threes until it reads AUG, the start codon, and that's where it begins translating the mRNA transcript. And as the video shows there, the ribosome then just continuously, continuously translate it's that transcript and, and, and uh, forms a polypeptide uh, and it just keeps doing that, keeps doing that until ultimately it basically finishes doing it and it actually stops translating. Now on your screens now once again is the, the actual amino acid or the codon chart there. I want you to have a quick look through that and see if you can figure out what codons might actually cause the ribosome to stop translating the RNA transcript. If you have a good look at it you will be able to see. So just pause me for a second. Okay, so there are three potential codons that actually cause the ribosome to stop. It could be, basically, the ribosome is moving along. If it reads UAA, it will stop. If it reads UAG, it will stop. Or if it reads UGA, it will stop. And if you're struggling to find those codons, they're in the top two boxes in the, the top, uh, top right-hand corner of the table there. So a, UAA, UAG, and UGA. So when the ribosome reads any of those three codons, that's when it knows it needs to stop translation. So it stops translation and then releases the amino acid, as we're going to show in the video just there. Now, that's the whole process. What might be interesting about this as well is that translation can happen. Uh, so that transcript that's been released, once um, the ribosome's actually transcribed that piece of mRNA, it's moved all the way along it, now that mRNA transcript can then be translated by other ribosomes and can be made into proteins continuously until eventually it will actually break down. And even though you're actually only seeing one ribosome translating one transcript, that one piece of mRNA can actually be translated by more than one ribosome at the same time. So maybe one, two, maybe three, uh, maybe even more ribosomes can be moving along one transcript translating that into proteins all continuously all at the same time so that proteins can be made quite rapidly. So that's completed the um, podcast stuff for translation. So we've done transcription, we've done translation, but was the third type of, or the third process that's part of protein synthesis that we do need to talk about, which is RNA processing. So that's what we're going to cover now. First of all, see if you can remember from what we've maybe learned in class and from what you've read, what's, why does RNA processing not always happen? Just pause me for a second if you need to. Okay, so the answer to this is dependent really on the type of cell that's involved. So if we were to divide cells into two particular types, we would probably divide them into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And the difference between those two cells is that a eukaryote has a nuclear membrane or a nuclear envelope that surrounds its genetic material, and a prokaryote doesn't. There's also a difference, though, in the actual genetic information, the actual genes itself, the actual DNA. Although the DNA is the same molecule, there's a difference between the way that the protein coding regions of those genes, the bits that actually get translated, are actually distributed amongst the gene. Now on your screen right now you can see an image there that shows a piece of DNA from a eukaryotic cell. And you'll notice that there's different coloured bands that represent different parts of the DNA. You've got exons and introns. Now basically exons are the parts of the DNA from a eukaryotic cell that actually are translated into proteins whereas the introns are really just interrupting sections of DNA. And there's lots of theories of about what that, those pieces of DNA do, but nobody really has a definitive answer of why there actually are these interrupting or intron pieces of DNA between the protein coding regions. As the diagram shows, what's actually happening in RNA processing is the introns, the bits that are interrupting, the blue bits there, are actually removed, they're cut out, and the exons are then spliced together. And very simply, that's what happens in RNA processing. So the RNA, pro RNA is processed to remove the intron DNA. And that only happens in eukaryote cells, and it always happens in the nucleus before the transcript leaves the nucleus to find the ribosome and begin translation. So that's a lot, guys. It's quite a lot of stuff to get through, and you're probably going to need to watch it all more than once. But remember, use the wiki space to help you and ask questions, and speak to me in class. So keep it real, and I'll see you soon.